Rappaport Lubering shunt is a glycolytic shunt pathway unique to RBCs. In this pathway, glycolytic intermediate 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is converted to 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate by the action of a bifunctional enzyme. So, what is a bifunctional enzyme? Normally, enzymes have only one active site. Each enzyme, one active site. But there are enzymes with more than one active sites. These enzymes are known as multifunctional enzymes. Bifunctional means two active sites. So, there are two enzymatic activity, right? Active site 1 and active site 2. So, how this enzyme acts? For that, first let us look at one of the portions of the glycolysis. Entire glycolytic pathway I am not going to show. Let us look at the relevant section of the glycolytic pathway. Glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is converted to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate by the action of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. Right? In the next step, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is converted to 3-phosphoglycerate. This is a substrate level phosphorylation reaction. There is production of 1 ATP in this reaction. This reaction is catalyzed by phosphoglycerate mutase reaction. Right? In the subsequent step, finally pyruvate is produced. So, what we are focusing is this reaction 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to 3-phosphoglycerate. This is a substrate level phosphorylation reaction. This portion is going to be bypassed. So, that is called shunting. See, what is shunt? Instead of going direct, you are going to skip one of the regions and you are going to shunt, take a shunt. So, you are going to skip this region. So, this is what is going to happen in glycolysis. We are going to sh skip this enzymatic reaction, right? So, who is going to catalyze the shunt? Bifunctional enzyme. So, there are two activities. The first activity is mutase activity. So, this is converting 1,3-BPG to 2,3-BPG. What is the second activity? That is phosphatase activity. So, this is converting 2,3-BPG back to 3-phosphoglycerate so that it will come back to glycolysis. Okay. So, just a single step of glycolysis is skipped and Glycolysis continues. So, that is why this is a glycolytic shunt pathway. I am very sure that you have understood what a shunt pathway means. Right? Now, there is a matter of concern here. What has happened? The substrate level phosphorylation reaction has been skipped. So, there is no generation of ATP in this reaction, right? So, there is loss of ATP because of this shunt pathway. There is one more ATP produced by pyruvate kinase step that is happening, okay? Only one of the substrate level phosphorylation is affected by this shunt pathway. So, nature is compromising on ATP for production of this molecule 2,3-BPG. That means this molecule is something very useful. So, what is the role of 2,3-BPG? It helps in unloading of oxygen. How? For that, look at the charges over 2,3-BPG. No need to memorize how many negative charges are there. Don't do that. Just look. There are multiple negative charges. So, this is a negatively charged molecule. This is going to bind to the central cavity of hemoglobin, adult hemoglobin that is alpha 2, beta 2. So, it is going to bind to positively charged amino acids. Because 2,3-BPG is negatively charged, it is going to bind to positively charged amino acid residues of beta chain. Which chain? Beta chain. Remember, this is significant. We will encounter this fact once again. 
histidine has imidazole group lysine has epsilon amino group so both are positively charged amino acids basic amino acids right once 2 3 bpg binds to these amino acids there is conformational change hemoglobin is an allosteric protein allosteric proteins they exist in r state and t state so hemoglobin undergoes r to t conversion r state means relaxed state okay so this is the state where loading of oxygen can take place so how do i remember whenever i go for yoga class i just go and relax then i take a deep breath right so relaxed state there is oxygenation okay t state is taut taut state tight state so this 2 3 bpg binding what is it going to do it is going to make multiple salt bridges so formation of salt bridges help in the formation of t state it stabilizes the t state t state is stabilized so t state is the state when there is unloading of oxygen why should we unload then only tissues can take oxygen right so allosteric proteins can exist in r and t state 2 3 bpg it stabilizes the t state i hope you have understood the concept of t state stabilization right so 2 3 bpg unloads oxygen right so that is why 2 3 bpg it shifts the oxygen dissociation curve to the right side so right side means more of t state hemoglobin left side means more of r state hemoglobin right so t state means decreased affinity for oxygen r state mean increased affinity for oxygen right why increased affinity for oxygen for fetal hemoglobin we will discuss that later right so i hope now you are aware of 2 3 bpg shifting oxygen dissociation curve to the right side clearly right okay let's move ahead look at this this is one of the tricks i went last year so this is pulara ridge trek the altitude is more than 12000 feet above the sea level so what happens in high altitude the partial pressure of oxygen is low leading to hypoxia in response to hypoxia the body undergoes various adaptive mechanisms in high altitude one of the adaptive mechanism is increased 2 3 bpg so increased 2 3 bpg means increased t state of hemoglobin so increased t state of hemoglobin mean unloading of oxygen to the tissues clear right let's move ahead to another important applied aspect of 2 3 bpg so what you are seeing you are seeing the fetus there is feto maternal interface right so look at this there is diffusion of oxygen from maternal circulation to fetal circulation so always oxygen goes from mother to fetus not the vice versa from the fetus it is not going to the mother why that is what we are going to study now it is because fetal hemoglobin has high oxygen affinity compare the saturation curve for adult hemoglobin that is alpha 2 beta 2 
fetal hemoglobin is alpha 2 gamma 2 look at the p50 value p50 value is just 20 just 20 for fetal hemoglobin for adult hemoglobin it is 26 right so why hbf has high affinity for oxygen it is because of the fact that gamma chain has serine in place of histidine 2 3 ppg it binds to the beta chain histidine that we have already learned so in the gamma chain of hemoglobin there is no histidine instead of histidine there is serine so 2 3 bpg cannot efficiently bind to fetal hemoglobin so you cannot shift to the t state you cannot shift to the t state there is more r state hemoglobin so in r state what is going to happen in R state, there will be oxygen loading, loading of oxygen. So, that means high affinity of oxygen. Clear? So, this is the reason why oxygen is always transported from maternal circulation to fetal circulation and not the vice versa. So, this can be a question for you in exam. Right? Now, I am sure that you will be able to write this in the exam. Let us move ahead to the final clinical application of 2,3-BPG. So, what are you seeing? You are seeing the blood stored in blood bags. Stored blood has low level of 2,3-BPG. In high altitude, there is high level of 2,3-BPG. Stored blood in blood banks has low level of 2,3-BPG. So, there will be left shift of ODC, right? We don't want this because if you are transfusing this stored blood to a person who is suffering from anemia, what is going to happen? Already there is uh, anemia, right? So, in anemia, what is the problem? The oxygen carrying capacity of the hemoglobin, that is, oxygen carrying capacity of the blood itself is low. Now, if you give blood in which 2 3 BPG level is low and the oxygen is not going to be distributed, so it will affect the patient, right? So that is why we add adenine, dextrose, sodium citrate and inorganic phosphate to maintain the level of ATP and 2,3-BPG in the preservative. So the preservative used for collecting blood, it contains all of these substances. Right? So, I hope you are now clear with Rappaport Lubering shunt. You are clear about the role of 2,3-PPG in high altitude, role of 2,3-PPG in fetal hemoglobin, role of 2,3-PPG in the stored blood. If there is any doubt, feel free to ask me in the comment section. Please share this video with your friends. Thank you very much.